Sacre-bleu, qu'est-ce que c'est? Oh, ha, ha, ha. Yes, this is an all-new, all-electric, all-French, sort of, Citroën EC4. And it's quite an interesting looking machine, isn't it? Quite striking, very French, very European. Now we'll take it for a drive very shortly, but first let's talk price and range. And this piece of magnificence will set you back. Soixante-trois pommes du terre. It took me about 16 goes to get that. And for that you get 363 Ks out of a charge. But as you're about to find out, the ride is sublime. And we are off, and already I can see that this French Citroën has some things that are not very French. For example, I recognize this gear selector system in the center console there, because it's the same one used in the Opel Corsa E and the Opel Mokka E. And that's not a bad thing, it just means that they're using some parts in different cars, because this vehicle, Citroën, is now owned by Stellantis, big corporation that owns Alfa Romeo and Jeep and Ram and Peugeot and Citroën and all those other brands, which means that there's less likely things to go wrong, because they're sharing the same tried and tested parts in different manufacturers. Now, however, is a good time for us to unjam the printer of facts to reveal a backlog of statistics, starting with motor power. This has a 260 newton meter electric motor driving the front wheels with 100 kilowatts what's at its disposal and to put that into perspective if you're not familiar with how that feels in an electric car imagine this car with say a two and a half liter six cylinder and it surges away nicely it's not a rocket ship but it surges away to use the tired cliche it's like a Rolls Royce it just whooshes you along it's quite nice for a vehicle of this size in this class I think it just feels nice on that note, let's talk batteries, and this has a 50 kilowatt hour battery, 50 units of electricity, which should, in the real world, probably give you more like 300 kilometers per charge. I'm going to find that out by checking the efficiency as we drive. But combined with the weight and the motor power, our 0 to 100 time is about 9 seconds, which is more than enough for city applications. A lot of that power is at lower speed, which is good to race you up to speed to get into a space, as I'm about to do now. Oh, I can feel the front wheels just losing traction a little bit there, so it, it moves. It's no slouch. One thing I didn't expect, however, was the ride quality. I mean, I read about it before I picked the car up, but it is hard to explain. I will try very shortly. In the meantime, however, let's, let's talk exterior styling, because let's face it, you're buying this car because it looks interesting, it looks unique, it looks European, and this doesn't disappoint. Look at the design cues on the exterior. You've got that cool tail-like cluster design. You've also got those rugged panels on the side of the car, so your neighbors will think that in between trips to Faro, you do like taking your mountain bike out into the countryside. It looks rugged and tough. It's also got 18-inch aero blade wheels, which you can't deny, they do look pretty cool. As for interior options, you've got two, and they are both as dark as my soul. This is the entry-level version, the base model, which has a very black and grey interior. However, if you want to splash some extra cash, it's three grand, you can get the Hype Black interior, which has got a few more luxuries, and it comes with extra gadgets. However, both do have things like this, these little splashes of colour, which I appreciate. Not only that, but the heads-up display in front of me, which pops out of the dash when you start the car, it's so cool. It's also in colour, I've got the display showing me my speed, and the vehicles in front of me, and of course the it reads and shows me the road speed as well. It reads speed signs through the cameras as we drive past them. That's pretty cool. But also, the Hype Black option also comes with seated heats in both the front seats, a heated steering wheel. Actually, this one has a heated steering wheel too. And it's got a massage function on the driver's seat. But what I'd recommend doing, regardless of which one you go with, get this option above my head. It costs $3,000, but it lets so much light into this cabin. Seriously, it's worth it. And of course, it's got a little lid that you can close by hand if you want a little bit more privacy. You don't want the Eagle Police helicopter seeing what you're doing in the privacy of your Citroen. Now, I would love to tell you that this big 10-inch central display has drippings of color, but no, it's pretty black and white. It's very minimalist, uh, very European. Uh, but one thing I should point out is that it has Android and Apple connectivity. So regardless of whether you've got an Android phone or an iPhone, the minute you get in the car, it connects wirelessly, no cables, projects everything, your contact information, your maps, everything just comes up automatically, and you carry on driving, following your phone as you did before you got in the car. It's just brilliant. And one thing I'd like to point out is the sheer comfort of the interior. Seriously, the Citroen guy, before I picked the car up, he was telling me that the interior, the seats, are double padded. And not only are they comfortable, but they are designed to look comfortable and inviting too, with these cushion sections sewn in. And I won't lie, it is ridiculously comfortable. It is so soft. 
I only wish this one had seated heats. It's a shame this particular model doesn't. Gosh, this thing is comfortable. I cannot wait to get this on the motorway and see what the ride quality is like because supposedly it is epic. Let's go find out. And we're on the motorway doing, well, Auckland speeds, yep. We're crawling along doing 25 kilometers an hour right now, but don't worry because the braking and the accelerating is all being done for me. By just pushing a button, the car does all that for me. Look at that, it's slowing down. My foot is not even on the pedals. This is brilliant. And as we cross over the Auckland Harbour Bridge, one thing I really have to point out is the suspension system. The ride quality is like nothing else. It is something only Citroen could really do. It's got what's called progressive hydraulic cushion system. And it's hard to explain how it actually works using words. So I went on the internet and found a visual aid which I stole from Citroen's website. And it basically shows once you remove the skin of the car, it reveals a 2003 hotel room. Yeah, I don't know either. Don't worry though, I did find another video that does actually show how it works and it's pretty remarkable. Each shock absorber has progressive vents built into the side and it's got cushions built in at the very far limit of travel. And you can see from this cup of water that I filled up, it is now sitting next to me, even going over bumpy terrain. Look at the ripples, there's barely any ripples on it. I've seen more ripples in that scene in Jurassic Park. This is staggering. I can't believe it, seriously. I cannot believe it. I'm genuinely lost for words to describe the, the system of suspension in this car. Forget everything else in the video. If you get the opportunity to ride in one, take it for a drive, immediately, the minute you drive it off the lot, you'll be thinking, this is different. This feels like how I remember cars used to feel. It's, it's like nostalgia on wheels. See, the thing is, when I picked this car up, I was kind of wondering, how am I gonna make this video interesting? What's interesting about this car? It doesn't seem that remarkable on paper, but after just driving it, it's a treat. It's an absolute treat. If I had my way, all cars would have this suspension in them because I do love comfortable suspension, more than sporty suspension. This is a real Citroen, really. This really is. The lack of road noise and the lack of vibration could make this just a really comfortable family car. Of course, I mentioned earlier, it's also got speed sign detection. It has a 2.6 meter long wheelbase, which means the room in the back, the leg room, is quite substantial. I'm five foot 10 and there's quite a lot of leg room there, although there is very little headroom above me. So if you're taller than five foot 10, this might not be the car for you to ride in. If you're gonna be carrying kids in the back though, don't worry because it's got a couple of ISOFIX anchor points, one on each end of the back seat, and the back seat itself, I measured it at 122 centimeters in width. There's also 380 liters of capacity in the boot, which is just enough for a stowaway animated breadstick. And of course, if you put the seats down, I measured it at 160 centimeters from the rear lip of the tailgate to the back of the front seats. So there's enough room, or not quite enough to lie down, but there's enough room for some fairly substantial luggage back there. However, if you are looking for a fartment or front compartment, you're gonna be out of luck. Once you pop the bonnet on this car, you'll see that it is just full of electric motor components, inverters and stuff like that. There is no storage space up there. As for the driver's seat, if you have limited mobility, you'll be happy to know that at its maximum height, I measured it at 66 centimeters from the front lip to the ground, which means that if you're getting as old as I am, then getting in and out of this car is pretty easy. And I'm not saying I'm really, really old, but my IRD number is 12. This car also has something I've never seen before in any vehicle. And if you've seen these reviews, you know I get excited about weird stuff that no other car maker has done. This is cool. On the passenger side, if you press that little button there, a little shelf thing pops out. And then if you open up the shelf below it, out comes an iPad holder. And the whole thing just clips on to the shelf that popped out a moment ago. And it means that you can sit there and use your iPad as a passenger. And it's built in. It's always there if you want it. It's so cool. I don't know if I'd ever use it, but I love that it's there. It's really cool. However, it's not all puppies and rainbows. I would like to draw your attention to some things that I don't think are very awesome about this car. Starting with the lack of one pedal driving. That means that you can't just use the accelerator to speed up and slow down in most city situations. If you've never used it before, one pedal driving is just a form of very strong regenerative braking. That means that when you're slowing down, instead of that energy being wasted as heat and worn down brake pads, it converts it to electrical energy and puts power back into the battery bank. And it's absolutely brilliant, but this car just doesn't have it. In fact, when I turn it onto B mode for the most strongest possible regenerative braking, the most electricity that goes back in when I slow down, if I take my foot off the accelerator, 
it's only slowing down as if I've just changed gear in a combustion car. It's not very strong, I wish I could change that. Also, the driving modes, they're not exactly epic. For example, I'm in normal mode right now, but if I press the drive mode button, I can go into eco to maximize range, or I can go into sport, which, it's brisk, but it doesn't turn the car into a rocket ship. But overall, my list of complaints are fairly slim on this car. It is just generally a very pleasant place to be. Yes, I wish the dashboard had a bit more color to it. Yes, I wish I had a bit more oomph for people like me that like to drive like idiots. But overall, I can't really fault it too much. It seems pretty good. It's still by far the most comfortable car I've driven in recent times. But if you're thinking about buying one of these, you probably have reservations about a thing called charging. How do you charge it? It's kind of daunting, isn't it? Don't worry, there's two ways you can do it. You can either charge it at home or charge it out on the public network. Both are pretty painless. 85% of all electric car owners in New Zealand, they charge at home. They get home, they plug it in, and boom, the car charges while they sleep or make dinner or watch TV or whatever. And if you charge this car using the granny charger that comes with the vehicle, you're looking at a full charge in about 35 hours, which I know is far too long, right? So my advice to you is if you're gonna get an electric car, any electric car, get a seven kilowatt garage charger like I have installed. This is my one in my garage. I made a video recently showing the installation and showing how this particular charger works. And this is a great charger, by the way. So check out the link in the description underneath this video. But let's say you're doing what we're doing right now. You're out on the road and you need to charge using the public network. Well, let's go find a public charger and I'll show you how easy it is. Well, behind me is one solution. That is a rapid charger from ChargeNet. ChargeNet is New Zealand's largest charging provider. They have hundreds of rapid chargers just like that all around the country, and they're gonna double their network within three years. So if you're gonna get an electric car, sign up with ChargeNet, you won't regret it. It means you can travel the entire country in your Citroen EC4 without ever having to burn a single drop of expensive, dirty petrochemicals. How it works is pretty straightforward. You plug your car in. In. you select your plug type which is CCS the most common plug shape then of course you swipe your key fob or use your mobile app and that's it the car does the rest it's that easy and best of all all the electricity provided to these rapid chargers is from Ecotricity Ecotricity makes these videos possible and it's New Zealand's only certified climate positive electricity you can have it in your house your home your business and best of all it's really affordable because it's only from wind hydro and solar and nothing else, unlike that petrol-powered ute that just went past, that is clean. It's so clean, why wouldn't you go to ecotricity.co.nz, sign up now with a couple of mouse clicks, and boom, you're not only helping to turn back the clock on climate change, but you're also saving some cash. Charging using a rapid charger like this will take about 30 minutes on the average charger, but we're already at 86%, so let's unplug and go hit the road. And one of the coolest functions built into this is not only a button on the steering wheel, but because it has Android Auto and CarPlay Apple, I can basically just say, hey Google, navigate to Faro. Navigating to Faro Grey Lynn. And while I head across town to buy some fine foods, let us do a spud score. Starting with performance, and I'm giving it 5 potatoes out of 10, which is a perfectly average score for a perfectly average 0 to 100 time of 9 seconds. Handling's next, and it gets another 5, with this car being designed less for the racetrack and more for comfort, in which it gets 10 out of 10, and not just because of the sublime ride, not just because of the plush seats, not just because of the silence, but also for the complete lack of bings and bongs and alerts that play every other car made today. This one, for better or worse, assumes you know what you're doing and lets you get on with driving without telling you off all the time. Altogether, that's 10 potato points well earned. Efficiency is next, and it gets 6 out of 10, with my energy consumption suggesting I'd likely get around 314 k's out of a full charge in city and highway driving combined. Be warned though, on a highway-only road trip, you'd likely get around 280 k's per charge. As for gadgetry, this base model gets gets 4 out of 10 spuds because while it does have dual zone climate control, plenty of charging ports, 4 devices and Apple Android connectivity without the need for cables, it doesn't have wireless phone charging and the audio system is pretty average. However, it does come with an easy to program preconditioning system as standard if you want the cabin to be at a set temperature any time of the day or night. Value is next and I'm giving it 4 tubers because it's not
not the cheapest EV on the road, and some options require expensive upgrades like seated heats. And when it comes to charging speed, it earns six potatoes, as it can rapid charge at up to 100 kilowatts, which means that if you use a high power rapid charger like this, a charge from 20 to 80% takes just 25 minutes, which is handy for road trips. Style is next, and whether you like it or not, you can't deny it's unlike any other car on the road. It's a statement which gets a bold 7 out of 10. But is it fit for purpose? Well, yes and no. I'm giving it 6 spuds, because while it's a good sized family car, it has no tow rating, and its medium sized battery means long distance trips may require more charging stops. Also, the reversing camera doesn't make use of the full width of the screen, which is a pain because the rear window is kind of blocked by the cool looking spoiler. But as a city car, I've not driven a vehicle quite like it. And lastly, the all important PSC, it's not as high as I'd hoped. I'm giving the EC4 4 spuds, because despite the roomy interior, I could only squeeze 49 potatoes into the dashboard, mostly due to the bizarrely shaped glove box. Which means this admittedly fascinating vehicle gets a total spud score of 57. And I feel kind of bad about it not being higher, because I really, really loved driving it. So my advice to you is to forget any complaints I might have, because the spud score completely misses the unparalleled feel of the vehicle. If you're considering one, please give it a try, because you might find the in comparable driving experience dwarfs any negatives. And there you have it, the Citroen EC4 is definitely an unusual vehicle. It's interesting and it's different. It's much more different than I thought it would be when I picked it up. It's for the motorist who's worked hard and wants to reward themselves with something a bit more individualistic doesn't want to just go with the flow, but still wants something that costs nothing to run and is sublimely comfortable to ride in. This is definitely a car for the motorist who appreciates liberty, egalité, and fraternité. <laughs>